Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's video I am ex incredibly excited to be demonstrating to you our, our my second third of the Transformers War for Cybertron Autobot arc um, review. Then this, um, this third is actually going to be about um, transforming Mainframe and reviewing him and transforming him into Teletrend 1, taking a look at more of the accessories and so on. So this video is mostly going to transform Teletrend 1, take a look at the um, golden discs and finally take a look at that little miniature Optimus Prime. So without further ado, let's first un un unwrap or should I say take out of his little packaging this little tiny tiny little Optimus Prime. So you can do this with scissors or this little piece of tape. I'm not so sure why they put it there or you could just tear it or I do recommend scissors. Just use scissors like so. Take this auto uh, Optimus Prime out and then we can clearly see that op this little Optimus Prime is so tiny that I nearly just dropped him into an infinite abyss right now. So if you look closely, we can clearly tell this is Optimus Prime mostly of the body and everything. It is hard to tell because this figure is so small. It's, it's about the size of the Studio Series Dark of the Moon wheelie. So I do recommend being careful with this figure. Um, I believe this happens to be the back side of Optimus Prime, and this happens to be the front side because I can I could see the um, the the front truck parts and. Actually, this um, Optimus Prime is about the same size. If you did collect the Haslab Unicron, the very few of you that did collect it, uh, if you did collect the Haslab Unicron, then he'll be about the same size of the Little Slug, um, Hot Rod, and Galvatron. So, simply to insert Optimus Prime, there are like several little squares on Teletron 1, also known as Autobot Mainframe. You're just going to have to just insert him like this, and it looks like Optimus Prime is in control of, of the ship. So you just simply just insert it like so, and I do recommend being careful because this thing is very small and it could break easily. And then here we have Auto Optimus Prime um, controlling the arc. So if you wanted to do some sort of stop motion or something from far away, this is how it would look like or stuff or something inside the arc, and then we could see a bunch of computers and all those gizmos and everything. This little yellow orb actually, I believe it's like a map piece, like showing the the planet or even the universe and stuff like that so that is pretty cool so another thing um, we're showing right now is the is the golden disc accessories now these golden disc accessories there they do have individual pictures on each of them I do like this one more than this one this one has a bunch of weird symbols and this one has a bunch of items and stuff like that and they both do say the sounds of earth so I'll just move them in for a closer look we can see right here the sounds of earth Right here so I, I would simply just toss them to the side just put them away for now temporarily and, and then finally let's unbox I mean let's transform Autobot mainframe so the first thing you're gonna have to do is simply just detach this whole region where the legs are connected just detach this and this little Optimus Prime has um, has fallen off so just simply just Insert him back inside the little square. Just have him like that. I do recommend when holding this whole area, just have to hold it like this so the Optimus Prime won't fall off or anything. So then after that, you're just going to have to simply just take this piece, rotate it around, then swivel the whole the whole body around. like so. The, and then you'll end up seeing something like this. After that, you're going to have to then... Um, unfold this piece right here, unfold this as well, let me just move the camera a bit more up, unfold this piece, then after that you're going to have to unfold that piece, bring out the hands, fold this thing back in, and of course repeat the same process on the other side, you're just going to have to fold out the hands, fold this in, then after that you're just going to have to make sure this whole head region does, um, does come out like so, make sure it does come out like this, and then we can, we can simply just take out the head like so. After that, um, I do recommend removing um, Sky Spy as as he'll just be a, a bit of a bother. So and he uh, and the only possibility of this figure is this tiny little figure is um mostly like for storage or transformation or something. So this is all this figure can do. Just as you're seeing this little figure, this is all he can do. So I recommend putting him to the side. This little tiny Optimus Primer here, I'll just put all the way over there. And then after that, you're just gonna have to make sure you do you you do um make sure that this whole region does fall in here. 
After that, you're going to have to just align everything appropriately, flip the arms. After that, you're just going to have to open up the legs right here. Like so. Just going to open them up. Then after that, you're just going to twist the ankles like so. After that, you're just going to reattach them like so. Detach them and then let's take a back view. You're just going to have to detach them like this. Rotate the, the foot like that. And there. So now we have Autobot mainframe fully transformed into his, um, well, we have the, the Teletrend one fully transformed into his, his, um, Autobot mainframe mode. And honestly, what to say is that this actually does look quite nice. I think the sculpt work on this figure has turned out very exceptional. I think that this whole figure is, is just worth the money and everything. Not just this figure as the, the arc as well as mostly more worth the $170 you will pay for, for the figure. But I, but, um, this figure did make it more worth it, and and I was not expecting that it would come with a, a tiny figure, and this being my first Titan class figure, I am so, so um, happy of getting this figure, and I do not regret getting this figure at all. Um, so, right now, let's just take a look at the details and the sculpt work on this figure. So, let's first start off with, first off, let me just, yeah, I think that thing is tight. Let's just first off, start off with the head sculpt. I mean, come on, who won't love this? I mean, it's got a transparent visor that you, when you put your finger behind, it darkens and then it lights up in the light and at certain angles, it looks like this whole figure is alive. This whole character is alive. The the, the articulation, um, oh wait, let me keep going into details, is that um, we do see the Autobot logo, some computer decals here in the back. Right here, we see some, some, some more, more, um, more details, but I'll go into that when he's later in the, in the, in I believe the Teletron 1 mode. I believe, I'm not so sure if the next mode is Teletron 1 or this one, but I'll just call this one the Autobot mainframe mode. So, you could just, for Autobot mainframe, the, everything right here is just so cool. I mean, the sculpt work on this figure does look exceptional. I do like how it has turned out. For a tiny figure, I think that this, this has been a really good um, run with Hasbro, and they and by by adding a tight by adding I believe a, a a deluxe class with a Titan class, I really do appreciate what they did right there. Where articulation is concerned, you do have a swivel joint here on the here on the um, shoulder, um, right here a hinge joint on the shoulder as well. Um, Ninety degree bends on the elbow. No, sadly, no form of wrist articulation due to the nature of the design. Um, I believe um, hinge joints on the on the legs, but obviously they can't bend to a terrific degree because of the kibble on the back. But also, who's um, who's to blame the kibble? As this thing is this figure is like a triple changer, you know, or a quadruple changer. No, yes, a triple changer. Um, again, um, the knees can go up about like maybe three sixty degrees, but due to the nature of the sign that is restricting it, um, the knees can go pa past ninety degrees. The, the legs are here. They they are on a hit uh, ankle rocker joint, and even on the bend, we, we can see that it it has been sculpted really well right here, so that it could give you the impression that 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 he's that it's not just some some ugly mess that like the the War for Cybertron Huffer how that that figure um how that figure had a whole gap when you moved the ankle rocker joint. I am so glad that on this figure. That, that that th that that incident did not happen with this figure, and honestly, I think the sculpt work on this figure has turned out really exceptional. And honestly, this being my second time transforming Autobot mainframe, I think that there is a slight little problem in the transformation because this piece just keeps hinging out or something. But anyways, um, now with the with the transformation and the articulation that. Let's delve into the size comparisons of Autobot mainframe. For a Kingdom and G1 size comparison, here we have our our Kingdom Optimus, our core our core Kingdom and core Megatron, um, Optimus Prime. Um, I mean, sorry, we have our core Optimus Prime and our core um, Megatron compared to Teletran. I mean, Autobot mainframe, and I think the scale here does look kind of funny. Although I'm not so sure. Um, um, if this was an actual character in the G1 cartoon, but obviously I do know Optimus Prime would be way bigger than that. For a 
for for not a core class size comparison, for more of a deluxe class and kind of a Voyager size comparison. Here we have our our Kingdom Air Razor, Kingdom Huffer, Studio Series 86 Jazz, and Studio Series 86 Hot Rod. And I think the scale here between all, all these figures does look quite cool and quite exceptional. And honestly, I will display um, G1 cartoon characters like this on my shelf, and they will look, without a doubt, cool. I will mostly keep Teletron 1 in his robot form, I mean, Autobot mainframe in his robot form, and, and not mostly in his storage form in the arc. I'll mostly keep him in this form. Um, through in my collection and and throughout throughout my life and everything, and for a Voyager size comparison, that it, excluding the Studio Series Hot Rod, here we have uh, Dinobot, and honestly, I think the scale here does look quite nice. Honestly, if you think about it, Dinobot is barely just a tiny bit bigger, tiny bit, and and I think this I this figure would be about maybe the size of a Voyager class. For a leader class and a and a um, kind of a leader kind of combiner class, that um, that being our our a our Transformers Kingdom, kind of eighty six, also known as the Transformers Kingdom War for Cybertron, um, Ultra Magnus com and the Studio Series Optimus Prime combined with Jetfire, and honestly, I think the scale here looks really cool between all of these figures and these figures just look so amazing although these two are being g1 characters and this one being a live action figure honestly without a doubt all three of these look exceptionally well they look really well done and i and i think i will be displaying this figure among other other transformers such as leader classes upon my shelf so that that completing the size comparison, let's take a look at some of the other accessories that um, that the Arc slash Autobot mainframe and Teletrend One did come with. That being various blast effects. So here we have multiple blast effects. Um, all of them, like I said before, my original review. I mean, my my first video is they're all they are all um, um, what's it called? They are all. Um, Remolds, they're all the same mold as the Transformers War for Cybertron Siege Jetfire. So if you do have that figure, you'll be getting these same molds, but in a dark shade of blue, which does look cool and represents how the arc would look like when he is taking off. So, just to show you which um, blast effects are, you, you, will, you will get six. Those being uh, two base blast effects, two middle blast effects, and two... Edge blast effects. I think these all look really cool. I'll dwell more into these in the in the final video that I'm making of the of the of the arc. And now turning into the transformation of Teletran One, I mean Autobot mainframe into his officially Hasbro licensed Teletran One. So the first thing you're gonna have to do is similar to what we did earlier. Just tuck in the head right here, fold out the arms like so. And after that, you're just going to have to make sure this whole area does untab like so. Just make sure this whole region untabs and everything. Make sure everything is straight like this. Just make sure everything is straight, not uneven or swirly or whatever. Make sure you do connect this piece right here. After that, before you connect this piece, you're just going to have to make sure that the gray part is facing towards you. In other words, the hinge part is facing towards you. So just have that ready like so. After that, you're going to have to turn your attention toward the back right here. You're going to have to disengage this piece. And right here, we can practically see Cybertron on, a, on an arc, the arc with the lost Autobots face, Earth, and the Matrix of Leadership. I'll dwell more into that later on right now. Then after that, you're just going to have to make sure that these, um, these two tabs, in fact, go inside the legs right here like so. You're just going to have to bend the legs slightly, I believe so. I believe you're gonna have to do this. Um, yeah, you're gonna have to make. You're just gonna have to um, bend the legs ever so slightly. Just reattach this piece right here. Just bend them ever so slightly like this. And I believe you're gonna have to bend the waist a bit as well to to create these little um, slots right here. Then after that, you're just gonna have to. I believe. Um, as I have never transformed Teletran 1, I am merely just doing this from scratch. So if you do see me at one point, get out, get the get the, um, the instructions out. Please do not be mad or anything. Um, you're then going to have to just fold in this whole region, I believe. 
yeah, I do need the instructions. So, so as this will be my first time transforming Teletrend One, and I mean Autobot mainframe into his Teletrend One mode. Um, um, this is rather a bit tedious and difficult for me. So, I'm just gonna have to just have this whole area like so. I do recommend if you are um, the first time you ever are like transforming a transformer action figure, you do have to have the instructions laid out like this for a for a more um, for a more clear look and everything. So just have this ready. After that, you're gonna have to simply just you're just gonna have to simply bend the knees like so. Then after that, I believe so. You're just gonna have to. In fact, you're gonna have to. What's it called? You're gonna have to rotate the waist like so. Then bend this whole region like this. Then after that, you're just gonna have to make sure this whole area does tab in there like so. And that we're almost done with this. Then after that, you're just gonna have to unfold this piece. I don't need this anymore, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna put it to the side for now. You're just gonna have to you. You're just gonna have to open up this piece, fold in the hands, and then simply just align this up so that this piece, this little tab, does click inside here. I believe you're just supposed to leave this open. This tab does click inside here, and and you just tap this in as well, as it will become rather hard to do. Just align it up, nice, and there. So now you're gonna do the same process to the other side. Just gonna to have to make sure this piece does tap in as well. And some finishing touches, you're just gonna to have to open up this frame right here, this frame as well, like so. And then after that, you're just gonna to have to make sure this whole region does attach correctly and everything. And then you're just gonna to have to make sure this attaches right there as well. And with all that being said, he, wait, and just one little finishing touch, put the put Teletron's arms inside. And with that being said, here we have Teletron 1 transformed into his, well, Teletron 1 mode. So honestly, I think that this looks cool, especially with the Sky Spy. You can have Teletron 1 without the Sky Spy. So um, what I like to do is, um, uh, I believe you can insert this guy somewhere. I'm not entirely sure. Right here, we're back where he was. So I I would I like just to leave it there, but unfortunately you you can't. So I I would just leave it here. Although it does look quite thin and quite hollow and everything, but don't worry. That is just that is just a minor critique that I have. This um little sky spy does look quite amazing, quite cool. You could have this floating in space, sending pictures to the Autobots and whatnot. So I think that this looks cool. And you know another thing that does look cool with the Teletron One mode is that uh, I found that with with core class figures it does look quite well and it looks like probably they're they're on a computer or something like and something like that although I do like how it does look like with deluxe classes as well I think it looks a bit better with deluxe classes with the keyboards near the waist and the easy to grab and everything so let's not talk about the sizes right now let's take a look at the the decals here we can see Cybertron the Ark the lost Autobots face Earth, all the continents, and the matrix of leadership. So, um, those are all the details and everything about um, Teletrain 1. So, some final thoughts about this figure. I think that Teletrain 1 has turned out exceptional. I really do like this whole figure and everything, how it does look like. Um, and I will be posing this several times if I do if I do want to have the Autobots like trying to look at a computer or trying to find out something, trying to find out how to get to Cybertron the quickest way. I am using Huffer because he's like one of the smallest Autobots I have. Although I would I would definitely use Wheeljack, but at the moment I do not currently own him, own him, so that is why I'm using Huffer. So that concludes my second video of the Transformers War for Cybertron arc unboxing and review. I thank you all for watching. Please subscribe, leave a nice comment. Until then, I will see you at our next Transformers War for Cybertron arc video, which will be the final video of my three videos, which will be the grand transformation of the arc. So, um, that concludes my video. Thank you for watching. T um, please leave a nice comment. Until then, I will see you at our next Transformers War for Cybertron video. Thanks for watching and goodbye.